right, welcome back. It is time for a June wrap up. I honestly can't believe that it's the end of June. It feels like the year just started, but also like it's been going on forever. So I'm like equally excited that June is over, but also just can't believe that we're here halfway through the year already. June was my best reading month so far this year. I read 10 books in the month of June, which is the most I've read all year long. It's the most amount of pages I've read all year long. And for the most part, I enjoyed everything that I read. I read only romance in the month of June. I read historical romance and I read some contemporary romance. I read some series. I reread some books. I just uh, was in a romance mood all month long. And like I said, I pretty much enjoyed everything that I read. So I'm excited to share all the books that I read in the month of June with you. I think I'm going to do like a little uh, throwback to like 2019 Lindsay Reads and talk about the books in order from my least to most favorite. I feel like that would be fun. But before I jump into like ranking them and like talking about them like that, I'm actually going to just start with the books that I reread in June because I reread the first three books in the Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. I read uh, The Duchess Deal, The Governess Game, and The Wallflower Wager. I just was having a really hard time this month. Like work has been stressful and there's just been a lot of factors going into me just not having like the best month. So uh, I really just wanted to read something that I knew I would enjoy and I knew would make me happy. And so I read all of these and it was fantastic. These are just as good as they were the first time I read them and I'm really excited about book four. It was supposed to come out in February and it still hasn't come out and we don't have a release date for it yet. They ended up having to like push it back I think because of COVID and um, they haven't like announced a new release date currently on Goodreads. It says it's coming out in 2024. So I hope that's not true because I don't really want to wait three more years to read one of my most anticipated books ever. I mean, I'll read it whenever it comes out, no matter if it's like next week or four years from now, but I'm excited for it nonetheless. If you don't know, the Girl Meets Duke series is all about this group of four friends as they each like fall in love and find romance and get married and all that stuff. And every single book is fantastic. The Governess Game is probably my favorite book in the series. I just can't imagine the fourth book beating this one out for me because I just love a lot of the tropes that happen in the governess game. If you haven't read the Girl Meets Duke series, uh, what are you doing? Go do it. If you like historical romance, this is kind of, I think, like a staple of the genre that you need to check out. Tessa Dare is like the, a staple author in the genre and this series is fantastic. So I really recommend going and picking it up. Now I'm actually going to rank the rest of the books that I read in order from the book that I liked the least to the book that I liked the most. Starting off with actually the last book that I finished in the month of June and that was Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Klebus. This is also a historical romance book. This is about a man who unexpectedly inherits an earldom but he has no interest in being an earl. He has no interest in running this land or like managing this land and when he goes to the house where his cousin who was previously the earl lived with his wife he meets his cousin's widow and is immediately attracted to her and she's kind of a fiery personality she has a lot of opinions she and her husband weren't really married for that long i think they were only together for like only married for three days before he died and she is harboring a lot of secrets and guilt about his death. The main character, Devin, the, the man, and Kathleen, they form a tenuous friendship that obviously leads to something more. And I thought this was fine. Lisa Kleypas, I know, is kind of another staple of the historical romance genre. She's an author that I have been wanting to read for a while. I'm, I'm really interested in getting more into the like historical romance side of romance. And so I knew at some point I was going to read a Lisa Kleypas book and I saw this one was available. The audiobook was available from my library. So I checked it out. I listened to it and I, I just thought it was fine. I had a lot of problems with the main characters with the way the story was told and also just like in general the plot of the book I guess. First of all the two main characters Devin and Kathleen were so obviously in love with each other from very early on but just refused to communicate with each other. They just wouldn't like sit down and have an adult conversation. They just got mad at each other constantly and it, it was always a fight and I just didn't, I didn't care for that. I also really didn't care for the fact that a good majority of the book actually is told from the perspective of the two characters that are going to be the main characters in the second book in this series. I would say probably a third of the book is told from their perspective and it's like setting up their romance, which I didn't really care about. Like I, if I want to continue on with the series, I would care more about it, reading about it in the second book and just like 
the way that that all played out like the way that their relationship developed in this book particularly um i just didn't love so i doesn't it doesn't make me excited to read uh the second book in the series which is solely focused on them i'm interested in continuing on but i don't know if i'm going to do it immediately just because i'm not i didn't love this first one also there was like some dubious consent issues that i had some problems with and like i said like just the lack of communication at one point kathleen the main girl character lies to the guy about getting her period and so it's just a little bit weird there it was all right and but it doesn't it doesn't excite me to read more books by Lisa Kleypas. This is one of her newer series. I think this first book in the series came out in 2015, so relatively recently in terms of like how long she's been writing books. So I might go back and read something like a little bit older, maybe one of her first titles or something and see how I feel about her book then. But uh, yeah, it was all only all right. Next, I'm gonna talk about the final historical romance book that I read in June, and that was Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This is a relatively new release, came out a couple years ago, and it kind of made the rounds on booktube when it first came out. This is about a woman who is desperate to escape servanthood in her brother's household, and so she applies for and gets accepted into like an Oxford women's college on the stipulation that she join the women's suffrage movement. One of the main goals of the movement obviously was to get the the right to vote for women but also to convince the people in like the house of lords and stuff like the men to back their like bill to get the right to vote and so the main character moves to london and she is going to school and she is participating in the suffrage movement stuff and she meets a duke whose name I can't remember at this point. She meets him and basically like petitions him to back their movement, but he is a member of the Tory party. So he is like very conservative and is not really interested in backing them. Obviously some stuff happens and the relationship develops from there. Obviously they end up falling in love because it's a romance and that's just how things go. But this book was kind of weird for me only because one, like, I know that I necessarily love reading a book about a woman trying to convince the person that she is falling in love with to support women. Just personally, me as a person, um, probably wouldn't go for a man like that if I had to convince him that I deserved like the basic human rights. Uh, not really the first person I would try to jump in bed with. Also, the guy was just kind of a dick to her most of the book. I didn't ever really understand like why she was immediately attracted to him because he was he was a dick to her the first time they met and then was continuously a dick to her every other time they interacted. Also I feel like the audiobook might have hindered my enjoyment of this one a little bit only because at one point I was listening to it and they were just like sitting in the library talking and then it jumped to them like almost having sex up against a wall and it seemed like I missed some things. Like it seemed like I had missed a few steps between like the talking and the sex and come to find out my audiobook skipped like six chapters forward and I didn't realize it till I was like a couple more chapters in so I had to go back and figure out where I was and, and re-listen to all the parts that I missed and everything obviously made sense once I got the context. It, it kind of took away from it for me like it kind of brought me out of the story a little bit just because I don't know I just it was weird that and I've never had an audiobook do that from like on the Libby app I've never had it like skip like that so I don't know what was going on because the second time like when I went back and listened it didn't skip again so I don't know if there was just some weird thing going on with my app or what but anyway overall I thought this book was okay. I definitely liked the writing style and I liked the characters for the most part more than like Cold Hearted Rake, but I still didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I definitely didn't love it as much as other people seem to be loving it and I don't know if I'm really interested in continuing on with this series either. I think there's gonna be like four books total. The third one's getting ready to come out and it's following the main character of this book's friends. I can't even re honestly remember her name. It was fine. I definitely would recommend it again if you're into historical romance and are looking for something maybe a little bit different. So other than like my reread of the Girl Meets Duke series, not a lot of good luck with the historical romance this month, but I loved all of the contemporary I read. So I'm excited to talk about those. Next up, I'm going to talk about Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I read my first Christina Lauren book this month. Actually, I read two of them. Josh and Hazel was the second one that I read. I enjoyed the other one I read more, so I'll talk about that later, obviously. But I, for some reason, have just been like putting off reading a Christina Lauren book for a while and finally just decided I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna read one and then I read two. So Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, if you don't know, is about Josh and Hazel, obviously. They were friends in college or they knew each other in college and then they kind of reconnect a few years later when 
Hazel starts teaching at the same school as her best friend whose brother is Josh and she finds out that her best friend's brother is Josh. The guy that she's kind of like had this crush on for a long time. He's like the one that got away I guess and uh, it's all about them becoming friends and then their relationship developing into something more. I really loved the friends to lovers aspect of this book. I really loved the fact that they were so strongly in the camp of we're going to stay friends. The whole plot of the book is that they decide to start setting each other up on blind dates but they go together so it's like blind double dates and then at the end of the night more often than not Josh and Hazel just end up leaving together because the dates end up being a disaster or whatever. For the majority of the book they're just like in this like mindset that they're going to stay friends because they're each other's best friend. And then it's obvious like as they continue to grow their friendship that they are developing feelings for each other and it might not be as easy to stay in that like friend camp as they were hoping. As a reader obviously I was like rooting for them to get together much sooner than they did but I really appreciated the way that the authors like built up the friendship and like made it a slow transition into a relationship as opposed to them just immediately jumping into bed with each other after they realized that they might have a little bit of feelings for each other. The only thing that like brought this book down for me was the ending and I'm sure if you've read the book you understand because a lot of people seem to have the same problem with the end of the book that I do and uh, I guess I'm gonna just put a spoiler warning here if you don't want to know how the book ends then skip ahead to the next timestamp because I am uh, gonna talk about the end but I think that the like unexpected pregnancy thing was uh not great. It's not so much that I care about the unexpected pregnancy so much as I don't really like the way it happened and the way that the book just ended. Yes, Josh and Hazel had decided to, to be together before Hazel tells him that she's pregnant, but it did seem a little bit like their relationship happened, finally like happened because she got pregnant and so I don't know I just a little bit like didn't love that. It definitely didn't detract too much from my enjoyment because I still really liked the book uh, and I do definitely want to read more Christina Lauren in the future. I just think that it could have been done differently like the execution could have been done better or whatever. Next I'm going to talk about Crazy Stupid Romance which is the third book in the Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. I have been reading this series since it started last year, two years ago, and have just, you know, been enjoying it. This one was probably my favorite of the series so far because I really loved the character relationships that happened in this one as well. Character relationships? I enjoyed the way that the relationship happened in this one as well. Similarly to Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, this follows Noah, I believe, and Alexis as they are kind of dealing with the fallout from the second book. I don't really want to go into too much detail if you haven't read the series and you're planning to, but basically something happens to Alexis who's a side character in the first two books at the end of the second book and she and Noah are very good friends like they're best friends and they spend a lot of time together and uh, they both are very adamant with their respective friend groups that they are just friends they don't have feelings for each other and it's obvious from a reader's perspective and from their friend's perspective that they do have feelings for each other and so again just like Josh and Hazel I really loved the progression of friends to lovers in this one I felt like it was just so well done from from the very start I just I loved the fact that they developed this friendship into something more and they didn't immediately jump into bed together when they realized they had a little bit of feelings for each other. I think the series does a pretty good job of exploring deeper issues outside of just romance. In this book Alexis is also uh, dealing with the fact that she has found out that she has a family. She's never known her dad but she finds out that her dad has couple of children. She meets her dad for the first time and he has a couple of children from another marriage and uh, she has siblings and she's kind of like figuring out her place in this new family as well as also figuring out her place in this new relationship and I just really liked it. It was really funny like this was probably the only book I've read maybe all year but definitely this is one of the only books in this series or this is the only book in the series that I genuinely like laughed out loud because there were some genuinely funny moments. I think the second book in the series had some problems which could detract anybody from continuing on but I think the third book is worth it if you are interested at all in the series. My biggest critique I guess of the series in general though is that it seems to praise these men for doing the bare minimum. <laughs> like they are in this bromance book club where they read romance to fix their relationships and it's like a lot of big speeches by these men like explaining how important like feminism is and, and why it's important to treat your woman kind and 
I mean, that should just be basic common sense, you know, to be kind to women, especially the woman that you're possibly in love with. <laughs> I don't know, there's just a lot of like, pats on the backs for these boys that are doing the bare minimum <laughs> when they should be doing that all along. Like, why do they have to read romance to, to learn how to be good people, you know? Anyway, I was surprised to find out that there's actually going to be a fourth book in this series that's coming out, I think, in a couple months, maybe in August or something. So I'll probably read that when it comes out and I'll just keep reading this series because I just I do think it's fun. I, I just think it's a fun series. Next up, let's talk about the other Christina Lauren book that I read in June. Actually, the very first book I read in June and my very first Christina Lauren book, and that was Love and Other Words. This was another really fantastic friends to lovers story. This is about a girl named Macy who when she's like a teenager, her and her dad buy this vacation house in the mountains or something. And she goes up there every weekend and she becomes really good friends with the boy next door. Pretty much they have like a, a solid friendship for most of their like teenage years. And then something happens their senior year of high school that puts a huge wedge in their relationship and they don't see each other for 10 years. And at the start of the book, they run into each other again at a coffee shop in, I think San Francisco, I think that's where it's set. And it kind of re-sparks their friendship and then maybe something more. And I really liked this book a lot. I love Friends to Lovers. Like I realized this month, like the Friends to Lovers trope is probably my favorite, even more so than Enemies to Lovers, just because I love that like solid connection, that, that base that people build before they become romantically involved with each other. And this book was no different. I thought that Macy and Elliot were two really solid characters. I liked reading about both of them. It's told only from Macy's point of view, but you get such a solid, look into what Elliot is thinking and, and his own motivations for their friendship and relationship. There was like this one little thing that happened towards like you find out about towards the end of the book that if it were me I don't know if I would be so readily able to forgive but I do really think that they had such a solid friendship that helped lay the groundwork for anything for the future and I, I just really loved I really loved this book. I thought it was really, really good. This is what made me want to read more Christina Lauren and I'm eager to do that. Like I have so many more books that are on my wish list from the library. Like I'm ready to read more books from this author duo. So I can't wait. And finally, the last two books that I'm gonna talk about are the first two books in a series and I loved both of them so much. So I'm gonna talk about them together. And that is The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test by Helen Huang. These are the first two books in the Kiss Quotient trilogy, I believe it's going to be. The third and final book, The Heart Principle, comes out in August. The first book, The Kiss Quotient, is about Stella. She is a woman who is on the autism spectrum and she thinks that she's bad at relationships and bad at sex. And so she decides to hire an escort to teach her how to have sex and to be in a relationship. And the idea is that once their lessons conclude that she will be able to be in a real relationship. She's never been in a relationship before and she really wants to. And obviously her and Michael, the escort that she hires, end up developing feelings for each other and it's just great. It's so great. I loved this book so much. First of all, it's so much fun, so romantic and sweet, but also so incredibly steamy. Like some of the steamiest smut that I have ever read, I really wasn't prepared for exactly how uh, steamy it was going to be. And I'm not complaining about it. Sorry if the angle is a little bit off. I had to delete some stuff off my memory card and it obviously the camera moved. Anyway, as I was saying, Helen Wong not only did a really good job of writing some of the best sex scenes I've ever read, but also writing some of the best romantic scenes that I've ever read, and I just really, really loved this book. It is an own voices story. Helen Wong is an Asian American, and she is also on the autism spectrum, so she is writing from a very personal place, and I think that that is reflected in the characters and in the story. I just really loved this book and I was so excited and I loved it so much that I had to immediately jump into, or not immediately, but I, I definitely had to pick it up before the month was over, The Bride Test, which is the second book. So this book is about Kai, who is Michael's cousin from The Kiss Quotient, and his relationship with Esme, who is a woman that his mother met while she was in Vietnam. She was actually in Vietnam specifically looking for a woman to bring to America to have a relationship and potentially marry Kai. And so she brings Esme over and they meet. And obviously like they have a, a rocky relationship to start with, but they grow to 
be very fond of each other and then eventually fall in love as with any romance and I really enjoyed it. There obviously are some issues with that premise. There's a major power imbalance between Esme and Kai. Uh, the stakes are way higher for Esme because she uh, is basically promised to be set if they meet and fall in love like Kai is well off and she will you know not really want for anything because he'll be able to provide for her and if he, it doesn't work out she has to go back to Vietnam with nothing and also she has a daughter who I believe she waits way too long into the story to tell Kai about. There were some some definite like perfect moments for her to open up and share that with Kai and she doesn't so it's a little bit weird because there was definitely like this withholding of information. Also Kai like Stella in the first book is on the autism spectrum and so there's this barrier between the two of them. Kai doesn't really know how to communicate with Esme all the time and so not only do they have to like overcome the cultural barrier because she doesn't really speak English and he doesn't really speak Vietnamese but they also he also has to like explain to her like what autism is and explain to her like why his behavior is different. I thought that the story and the relationship was very layered and I really enjoyed the progression of it and I enjoyed how it developed but I do think that there were some problems with the book. I definitely didn't like it as much as The Kiss Quotient but I still really enjoyed it and I'm really excited to read book three. I cannot wait to read about Quan and his love story in The Heart Principle which like I said comes out in August so not a lot of wait time and I am so excited. So those are the 10 books that I read in the month of June. It was such a good reading month like it was just so nice to read romance and just be happy and just read about love. I don't know I just really really enjoyed everything. I'm just glad that I took the month to only read romance although now I'm excited to get back into other things. I've, I'm craving like mysteries and fantasy and stuff so I'm excited to uh, read some other stuff now but it was really fun to just devote a whole month uh to reading romance and reading romances that i've been putting off reading authors that i've been putting off and i can't wait to check out more from these authors in the future but also uh just continue to read finally like it's just so great being back in the mood to read let me know down in the comments if you've read any of the books that i mentioned in this video and what you thought about them let me know do you have similar or different opinions to me i'd really love to know also let me know some books that you read in the month of june or maybe your favorite book that you read in june i'd really love to know that as well thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you again very soon bye